Usually, people have the right to believe whatever they choose to believe. However, that's a luxury that the oppressed does not have. We must function based upon what's true, because if our understandings are flawed, then all of our remedies that stem from those misunderstandings will also be flawed. This is why those who know the truth must teach. African proverb. Many African Americans are saying that sagging started with slavery and it's somehow connected to the evil practice of butt breaking. This is where in which enslaved black men were raped by the evil white enslavers. Sagging has nothing to do with that practice. Yes, indeed, enslaved black men were in fact raped by their white enslavers. But to believe that after raping them, that their enslavers then insisted that they walk around the plantation sagging is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous statement. Sagging pants would have reduced the slaves' ability to perform their chores because you can't pick much cotton while at the same time holding up your pants. The white enslavers would also never allow a slave to sag his pants because it creates the possibility of their wives and daughters seeing the slaves' private parts. That would, that would have enraged the white enslaver. Furthermore, if sagging started during slavery, the style would have been prevalent uh, in the African-American culture during the years immediately following slavery. But that wasn't the case at all. The style did not appear until the, early, um, the late 80s, early 90s. When critically thinking and looking at facts, it becomes clear that sagging is not connected to slavery. Many are also insisting that sagging is connected to the homosexual practices in the prison industry. The sagging phenomenon is not the result of the prison industry, where which most prisoners, uh, where most prisoners have a heavily enforced dress code requiring prisoners to wear Velcro belts. Furthermore, if men engage in homosexual behaviors while incarcerated, most do not return to their communities and families flaunting that fact. Most will conceal any customs and behaviors associated with the practice. Furthermore, the prison to the street theory is not how a national trends are created. For something to become a trend requires concerted effort of media marketing. The style of sagging is the deliberate result of negative media social engineering. The African-American culture is being covertly negatively steered by what oppressive forces. Because they control our media images, they're able to covertly negatively steer our culture. This isn't some feeble-minded attempt at scapegoating in order to absolve ourselves of our own responsibilities. Nor is it a silly conspiracy theory. It's the truth that they hide from us. Media social engineering is a real and well-crafted system that the ruling class has totally mastered. Most people naively believe that the media reflects our reality. But in truth, it is more often we that imitate what we see and learn from the media. A group's identity is shaped by how they repeatedly see themselves depicted within the media. People often become those derogatory media depictions of themselves that they've accepted as being their true reality. This is why whoever controls a people's media images control their culture. It's a true science known as media social engineering. Because the white society controls the media images of African Americans, this allows white social scientists and white propagandists to negatively steer our culture. Their ability to steer black culture through media social engineering is immensely powerful. So much in fact that if they wanted black youths to start walking around every day with a yellow afro comb in their left rear pockets, all they would have to do is place that image in several rap music videos, movies, and TV shows being depicted as very cool and trendy. In doing so, our black youths will then see the image, imitate it, and then adopt the image as being their own. All those in fact not. The style and behavior was actually learned from what they repetitively saw in the media. It was secretly created by white media social engineering scientists and white propagandists. When these um, social scientists uh, and propagandists create trends and customs for black youth to imitate, 
They deliberately create those that gets our black youths acting and dressing as caricatures that reinforces resentment and anti-black prejudicial perceptions about us. Moreover, those images that reinforce many negative racist stereotypes about black people. Black youths become the caricatures of the derogatory images and stereotypes that they've accepted as being themselves. Likewise, the sagging style was placed in movies, music videos, and being depicted as cool and trendy, and then millions of black youths merely imitated the style. Because we African Americans were stripped of our true identity and culture during the enslavement of our ancestors, we are therefore more susceptible to negative media social engineering. The narrative that we African Americans made the N-word ours and that using it now empowers us are both lies created by white propagandists to keep us from learning the truth. The truth is that it was actually through negative media social engineering that we were conditioned to call ourselves niggers. The programming began through the early black exploitation films and is now being continued and reinforced through the white controlled hip hop industry. By socializing us to self-identify ourselves as niggers, they condition us to perceive ourselves through a false uh, inherent subordinate identity that aids the white society in maintaining their social dominance over black people. As long as we're calling ourselves nigger, we'll always be beneath them. They're waging a covert war against African Americans that most don't understand. This is why those of us who know must teach. It was done in response to the 1960s unprecedented unified black protests. White social scientists were hired to study the African-American population to find our greatest strength uh, and our most exploitable weakness. Once these were determined, their mission was to attack our greatest uh, strength and to exploit our most exploitable weakness. They determined that our greatest strength was black unity. They therefore attacked our unity unrelentingly with black divisive propaganda. And that propaganda campaign has been extremely successful. It's the true reason why many African-Americans now insist that it's we that are now our own worst enemies. They determined that our most exploitable weakness was the fact that we were stripped of our true identity and culture during slavery. They therefore exploited this fact to negatively steer our culture through negative media social engineering. It's the true reason why millions of us are now calling ourselves niggers, Thugs, bitches in hoes, sags our pants, and glorifies pimps. They negatively stare our culture um, while misleading us to believe that we're staring ourselves. The African-American population doesn't know what's happening, and it doesn't even know it doesn't know. White oppressive forces are playing chess, while black people aren't even playing checkers. We're playing hopscotch. Our ignorance of the fact of what's been done to us gives the white side the greatest power over us. It's time to wake up to our reality. Learn about media social engineering. They're waging a war against us and, and we're clueless of it. It's time to wake up to our reality. The time of believing in idiotic things that insults our intelligence is over. We must learn of the social sciences that are being deployed against us. One love and peace.